Jason, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. Heard great things about your story, but haven't really heard much about what your story is, just that you have a really good one. I'm super excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very honored to be a part of your podcast and to share my story too as well. So yeah, my name is Jason and I live on the San Carlos Reservation here. So, so I'm in Arizona. I'm a uh, part of the San Carlos Apache tribe here in San Carlos. So yeah. But anyway, I was, uh, I was raised in the church. Uh, my grandpa, uh, William Brown Sr., he's actually one of the very first Apaches to be baptized into the church, like back in 1940 or 50s. That's how, how deep my, my roots fall into the church. And my mom, she, she was raised into the church, and so, you know, I was raised into the church. My dad, on the other hand, was a convert into the church. But anyhow, I was raised in a, a good home, and uh, we went to church all the time. Like I said, my dad was a convert, and we uh, lived in this area where we actually didn't have church building. And so we used to hold church in our house. And I remember as a kid how we would have the congregation come into our living room. And we'd have all this church material, too. We have this little music stand that we would use as a, like, I guess as a pulpit in the living room. So we were able to uh, hold church in our home when I was a kid. And eventually, the area where we were at, some years down the road, they ended up closing the branch out there. So we had to like drive from that area all the way out into Tucson, which was like another hour out. <laughs> oh my so, gosh. So yeah, you know, uh, and, and I say that just to give you a history of how dedicated my parents were and still are to this day to, to the church. And their faith is so, so great. And so me and my brothers, that's how we were raised. We were raised with good parents. And with my story, it all started when, after I got married, I was married uh, when I was only, I was like 21. Me and my, I married my high school sweetheart and uh, we got married. We started a family. We had uh, our first son. His name is Malachi. And then we had our second son. His name is Neilan. And then we have another. We have a daughter. Her name is Emmalyn. And then we have Lehi. And so there's there's actually four. There's four of them. We were sealed into the temple in 2004. We were sealed in the temple. And it seems like after... After we were sealed, I started taking on callings in our, in our branch, and it seemed like that's kind of where it all started. And it seemed like um, the more callings and responsibilities I took on myself and the more that I would read and my testimony would thrive and I would share, it seemed like there was always something kind of on the polar opposite trying to extract that from me. And there was this incident that did happen. I mean, it's probably one of the most traumatic experiences any parent would ever experience. But so my second son, he was born in 2005. And in 2009, we lost him wow. uh, in a tragic, tragic accident. He was only like three years old. And that's the first thing that really kind of shook a lot of things for me spiritually and it really shook my faith because I was just like you know God why 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 me you know like that's how I thought that's what I thought right away I was like why me like why why take my 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 precious baby you know and all the, it, it, and it got to the point to where I was starting to get like, like I was mad at God that's how I felt. 
I felt like I was mad at God. I was like, you know, like you did this to me. What, you know, after I did all these things, and you know, I started questioning a lot of things, and then it was really rough after that. It was really rough. It was really, really hard. It took a lot on me spiritually, and um, I just like I just started to lose energy of. Like I started to slowly, slowly feel my testimony fade away. After that, I, I I couldn't connect. I couldn't connect with with anything spiritually, and I just started to question everything. I started questioning the, the church. I was like, "Is that true? Is that true?" And then I started reading. I started coming across some anti-Mormon stuff and reading that, and that kind of really was like mind-boggling. And I'm like. Is that really true? You know, and it seemed like after that, and it really shook my, my, my testimony and I'll start to question my testimony. Like, do I, do I still believe in this? And it seemed like once that door opened up, like my marriage just started to fall apart. And eventually I came to the point where, uh, where we did end up separating and we ended up getting divorced. And it was, uh, that was another, hard moment in, in my life was uh, divorcing. I can say that it was all because of me. I was fellowship uh, for the priesthood and that's another thing that really made me shun myself away from, from the church. And so when you get this fellowship, I don't know if they still do that uh, this day, but I know back like Gosh, this happened so many years ago, uh, 10, 15 years ago. At that time, I was told that I wasn't allowed to uh, partake in the sacrament. I wasn't allowed to share my testimony anymore. Basically, like I could still go to church, but I was encouraged to read the scriptures. And that, to me, felt like a slap in the face. Like It really felt like a slap in the face to me. But the way I took it, too, was that well, this is my fault. And I kind of put myself in this position. And now it's like, you know, my family's falling apart. And it felt like I just lost all hope at that point. After I got divorced, I just went down this spiral of uh, depression, dabbling into alcohol, just going out and doing just bunch of crazy stuff, you know, the things that I'm not proud to say or even talk about. And um, I was just lost. That's one of the times I was really lost. I remember my mom reaching out to me and, you know, really, really just trying to say, Jay, you need to come back to church. Because at that point, I'd stopped going to church. I stopped going. I just, I didn't want anything to do with the church. It seemed like I just, like I was just full of anger. I was full of anger because I wanted someone to blame. And so I blamed God. And that's what really set the fire for me. And it seemed like no matter what would happen in my life, like all these things would start to pop up and I would just be like, oh, well, that's, I guess that's that's how God feels about me. Is how I would take it back then. You know, it's just really, uh, really hard-hearted. I guess you know, just just wasn't myself anymore. Yeah, so I, I was lost for a while in that area for like a few years, and eventually I had um, I had met someone else. She kind of helped me uh, help me find and reconnect back into going to church again and eventually I got married the second time. Everything was going good at that point in my life. I'm trying to take the steps back into the right direction, but I still have all these things that I'm carrying that I can't let go of right now. You know, like I said, there's a lot of things that I did that I wasn't proud of. I just felt real ashamed of and I'm just like I felt really guilty going to church and I felt like 
you know, I don't think God wants me around in this in, in this church anymore. And I would tell my mom that. My mom would always tell me, you know, that's that's the devil that's talking to you. That's that Satan. He's trying to tell you to feel like that. It took me a while, and eventually, um, I did start slowly, slowly going back. But I really wasn't in it all the way. I wasn't in it all the way. I was like, yeah, I, I'm just not sure yet. And it seemed like when we were trying to take those steps, it seemed like things start happening in my second marriage. And eventually, that marriage fell apart. And I was lost again. You know, I, I ended up uh, getting divorced a second time, and I'm not proud of that. And I was just lost. And at that point, uh, I started dabbling into alcohol again and just, I, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted. But the one thing that really, really kept me going was my kids. Thank God my kids, I was still able to see my kids. I was able to spend time with them and able, I was able to really keep that relationship, that, uh, father, son and father daughter relationship with my kids and that's what really kind of kept me afloat was spending time with them and then there came a time where i guess you could say i was oh i was single and i was really trying to go back to church that's when i was really like you know i i really need a i need to do something i i need to show my kids you know, because uh, that's the one thing that really wanted me to go back to church was, you know, my kids are getting older. They're not little kids now. They're starting to grow up. And I was like, well, do I really want them to be lost or do I want them to stand on a firm foundation? And so I was slowly, slowly starting to go back. And slowly, uh, the branch president at that time was really working with me and he was really trying to encouraged me. He was always happy to see me when I would go to church. He'd say, hey, hey there, Brother Bonnie. You know, he'd say all these things. And, and it felt good. It felt really good. I felt I, I felt like I was, you know, I felt like at home. I felt at home. I felt the spirit. And it was something that I haven't felt in a long time. And I was like, okay, this is, this is good. And at the same time, I was uh, still talking with my, uh, my first wife, who was um, my kids' mom, and um, we would talk, you know, every now and then. And um, somehow we we ended up uh, starting to uh, talk more often. There was this uh, incident that happened where I, I found myself in the hospital. I was in and out of the hospital. I had this infection in my in my leg, and it seemed like it wouldn't go away. And when I was in the hospital, my kids' mom would come and bring the kids to visit me. And we'd be in there, and that's like the only time I felt so happy in that hospital was when my kids came in. And we just felt like a family again because, like, you know, she, she was there, and she wasn't, uh, you know, we, we were both single at the time. But, you know, it was kind of like it was a... Uh, familiar feeling it was a familiar feeling that I, I, I really missed and uh, I really enjoyed it uh, every time she would come by with the kids and we would just talk and laugh and it just it just felt like a family again after um, I was in the uh, hospital I was in there for about two weeks and by the end of the second week I was really really I was getting depressed again I was just like, I don't like feeling like this. I said, maybe I should pray. So I said a prayer. I was like, Heavenly Father, like, you're real. Can you send somebody or, or, or just help me? Just help me so I don't feel like this anymore. I need to get out of this, how I'm thinking, how I'm feeling. And I would try to read my scriptures or my dad would come by and he would sit down. We'd read the church magazine together which was cool, but it, it just was like, there's something missing. Anyway, um, it was a Sunday morning, and I remember feeling like, man, I should be in church, you know, like, 
oh man, like I sure miss going to church. And I was laying in my bed. And later on that afternoon, I heard this knock on the door. The nurse walked in and she's like, uh, Mr. Bonnie, uh, you have a couple of visitors. I was like, what visitors? I'm not expecting anybody. <laughs> and lo and behold, in walk in these two, uh, elder missionaries and this other young man that uh, was getting ready to go on this mission from our branch. And they, they walked in and I was like, Oh, hey, what's going on? You know, I didn't know. And then he walked in. One of them just came up to me and said, Hey, Brother Bonnie, we were told by the branch president to come and administer the sacrament to you. And I just felt, I, I felt so happy and I just, I broke down. Like I was crying. Like all these tears are coming down and they're just looking at me and I'm just like, I said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I said, you don't know how much this means to me. And so they, they came in and they, uh, they blessed the sacrament. I partook of it and I felt much better after that. They had given me a priesthood blessing and that really helped me out. And then after I got out of the hospital, we, um, just kind of out of nowhere, we took this little road trip, me and, uh, me and the kids' mom. And when we were on this trip, you know, I, I really felt reconnected again with with the family. And it was just something that I felt so happy. And I was like, this is what I want. I miss this. I want this, you know. And so when I was waiting for when the time was right, and when the time was right, eventually down the road, I, I sat down with um, with my ex-wife and sat down. I was like, oh, yeah. How do you feel about, like, you know, well, all this going on? You know, we, I kind of brought it up to her. She said, yeah, I like it. I enjoy it. Like, I love it. You know, I miss it. I was like, me too. And I said, uh, you think it's possible that uh, we could work something out, <laughs> you know? And she's like, yeah, I was actually thinking the same thing. So I said, well, okay, all right, well. I said, you you want to try this again? She said, yeah. Yeah, I would love to try it again. So after that, we, uh, I guess you could say we started dating again. That was like 2018 and 2019. I remember it was like right before the pandemic. And I was still kind of on the sidelines of uh, if I wanted to. I was really trying to get back into um, getting my my uh, my priesthood back, and it was really challenging at that time. Uh, it seemed like there's you know different hoops that I had to go through. It, it just kind of shook up my faith again. I was just like, man, like, am I not supposed to have the priesthood, or like, you know, I start all these questions start start coming, and I just started to really question a lot of things again. And I just like started losing confidence. I remember there was uh there was this one time and this is a really cool story here, um where we were uh, gonna make preparations to go to conference, the general conference to in Salt Lake City. And believe it or not, my parents one of their calling is that they are translators for the our, our branch. So every general conference, they, they travel out to Salt Lake City and they go over the talks and they translate it in our Apache language. So when they're talking, you can, you can hear them here at our branch. So you hear them here at the branch, then you hear them over at a, a, another small branch up in White River. They had invited us to go, to go up to general conference, they said, why don't you come, you know, bring the kids and all this. And I just wasn't feeling it. For some reason, I just wasn't feeling it. I was like, I don't want to go, you know, I was just, I was real negative about it. And I don't know why. But then uh, Kim, who was the kid's mom, or she said, let's just go. Let's just go. Come on. I really want to go. I would like to go. The kids want to go. So anyway, I went. We all went. 
and it was a it was a Sunday. It was a Sunday morning session, and I remember just feeling like uh, I was searching for a reason to advance and to you know like I wanted like I was searching for something like I really wanted something powerful. I want, like that was my whole intent going into that conference. Anyway, I walked into the conference and I looked over to the side and there's this table where they have these headphones for those that, you know, want to listen to like uh, in a different language. And so I was like, hey, let me see if they have our language on there because my, my parents, they were, they were going to translate it. So I went up and I asked the lady, I said, hey, do you guys have Apache on there? She was like, what? I said, you guys have the Apache language on there? She was like, wait, hold on. So I was like, oh yeah, yes we do. She programmed it, gave it to me, and I popped up my headphones. I went into the session, and I remember it was this uh, Thomas S. Monson when he was still around. He was a uh, he was a prophet, and he, it was his turn to talk. When he started to talk, my dad's voice came on, and he was speaking to me in Apache. He was translating what the prophet was what was talking about. And I remember just feeling like this really, really, really burning in my heart. And I knew right then that everything that my dad was translating to me was true. And it was such a unique experience because I've never, I've never felt that before. I mean, like I got emotional. I was sitting there, <laughs> tears going down my eyes, listening, listening to my dad telling me what the, what the prophet was, was was talking about, and I walked out of that general conference with a whole different attitude on life. We ended up uh, coming back home, and I I really was trying to change a lot of things because at that time too, I just really wasn't like I still wasn't all in yet. I was still going to church, but I really wasn't all in. But now it's like okay, there's some things I need to clean up in my life. And I need to take responsibility for, for things that, you know, I need to stop pointing fingers. All of that kind of went away. And eventually, me and my ex-wife, we ended up getting married. We got remarried again. So um, that happened uh, a couple of years ago, 2022. Yeah, so we ended up uh, getting remarried. And we had a little wedding. <laughs> It was, it was really, it was amazing. It was amazing. After we had gotten remarried, we said, let's go back to the temple. You know, so yeah, I'd like to do that. And so we did take the initial steps. And once we, we were talking with the, the state president, everything was going good. We went and did our, our interview to get our temple recommends. And we ended up getting our temple recommends back and we ended up uh, going back to the temple again uh, last year. So like a year after, you know, we, we finally stepped foot into the, to the temple together and uh, we went through a session. Uh, we did some ceilings and it was just such a amazing experience. And it seemed like this time it really meant something. Because the first time we went in, it was like 20-some years ago. And at that time, I was a lot younger, and so I wasn't really as hungry as I am today. Once we went back to the temple, you know, I really I knew what, what my reason in this life was for. And, and there's one more incident that happened, though. I seem like after we started going to the temple again, I started to um, have these uh, these panic attacks, and at the time I didn't know what it was. I just like my my blood pressure would go really high, and uh, and I wouldn't know why, you know. I mean, because because I'm a diabetic, and I deal with uh, high blood sugar, and you know, I'm trying to keep the whole balance, and so my blood pressure would get really high, and I would get really scared and I, I like I have these panic attacks I wouldn't know why and I didn't know what it was because I've never dealt with anything like this before in my life when I would be working out just like this 
overrushing feeling of fear would come in. I feel like like I'm scared, like I'm gonna die, and I would get scared, and my heart would just get all crazy, and and, and I didn't know what was going on. And I would talk to my doctor, I would talk to my wife. I was getting really frustrated, and I was like, "Man, what, what, why is this happening?" You know. Like, like, is it because I'm trying to take the right steps and something's trying to stop me? You know, like, that's kind of what I was thinking about right away. I was dealing with this, this whole thing. Cause I mean, like, it got to the point where like, I was scared to, I was scared to go anywhere because then like, um, I would have these panic attacks. It would just come and go, come and go. And I started to lose my confidence. I just was like, I was scared. I've never found my, myself in that place before uh when we would go to the temple or i would sit in the uh, celestial room, excuse me uh sit in the celestial room and i would just contemplate contemplate and just like i would pray be a lord heavenly father i don't know what what this is but like, I really, really need you right now. I don't feel this anymore. I, I don't like feeling like this. You know? And so every time we'd go to the temple, we, I, I'd always sit in the, in the uh, celestial room and I'd, I, I, I would pray. And I've never been to the temple so many times in my life than I did during that period. It seemed like every other week, me and my, 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 my wife we were always going to the temple and I just really I strengthened my testimony a whole lot. That's what it did. Even, you know, despite all these, you know, these uh, things that were happening to me, I still felt like everything was going to be okay. Something always told me you're going to be okay. Don't be scared. You'll be fine. I would always trust that, that feeling. I wouldn't question it. I would say, okay. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. And uh, eventually, um, I end up getting treated for it. I end up seeing a psychiatrist, and they uh, diagnose me with, uh, it's like uncontrolled panic attacks. And so uh, I was treated for it, and I'm, I'm a lot better now. I'm a lot better today, and it feels good. It feels good. I'm able to work out again and do things because before I couldn't lift heavy things, but now I can, and it feels really good. You know, there, there's there is one story I forgot to tell you, and this is before we got we we went we went back to the temple. And I, this is the reason why uh, things kind of really flipped for me and made me really want to go back to the temple. 2022, I believe it was. I was at work. I was getting ready to go on a walk with one of my coworkers. And back then I was just barely starting to exercise because I wasn't exercising for a while. It was uh, just a normal day. And we were getting ready to leave. So, all right, well, you know, lunch time's coming around. We're going to go take a walk. And so right before we were getting ready to leave, I start feeling like really, really weak. And I was like, man, I've never felt like this before. My coworker, she was like, is everything okay? And I was like, no, like, I feel weird. She said, like, what do you mean? I was like, I don't know, like, like I feel dizzy. And I started to feel really dizzy, and I was like, man, this, this doesn't feel right. And I started to get scared. I was like, man. like I started losing, like, energy. And then, like, I was having shortness of breath, and I was, and I had to sit down, and then I have this, uh, blood cuff that I take with me, and I checked it, and it was, it was really low. It was pretty low. I got scared, and I said, I think we better call the ambulance. We ended up calling the EMS, and, uh, they came to, uh, pick me up, and, uh, we're gonna go to the hospital and get, get, get checked out. Like, they were helping me walk outside. Um, they, they couldn't bring the stretcher into the, the, the gurney into where I work. So I had to walk outside. Anyway, I went outside and right when I laid on the gurney, like, I don't remember anything. 
I remember what, what, what happened. And, um, like I basically blacked out. The last thing I remember when I came to was, I remember barely hearing people call my, call my name. Like Jason, Jason, like that. Like that's what I heard, but I couldn't see anything. And then out of nowhere, like, I felt this real, it's kind of hard to describe, but I felt this real strong energy just kind of go into my whole body. And then like all these scrambled images of everything that like my whole memory started spinning, which was so weird. And finally, like out of nowhere, like boom, I finally, I woke up. And I was laying in the ambulance bed and I was just vomiting. I was just like throwing up everything. What they did is they used a defibrillator on me, kickstarting my heart again. At that time, we're on our way to the hospital. Like we're, the ambulance was, was moving and they're asking me my name, what year, like all these things. I was like, yeah, I was answering it. I was answering it. I was answering it. By the time we got to the hospital, I was in the emergency room and they ran a, uh, an x-ray. And come to find out that I had aspirated some of that vomit. So it was in my lungs, like a whole lot enough to where it could kill me. And so the doctor was really concerned about that. Like he wasn't even sure if I was going to make it. I remember my, like my mom came in, my wife came in and she was holding my hand and I was just, I was, I was really scared. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was like, I was barely breathing. I was trying to breathe. Like I was really, really trying to hang in there. And so uh, the doctor said, he said, Hey, um, he said, Jason, we're going to, we're going to send you to another facility. Um, and they're going to, he said, cause we don't have the medicine to treat you here. So we're going to send you out. Um, uh, he said, you got some, some vomit inside your, in your lungs. He said, we need to get it out like right now. He said, cause if not, like it could kill you. And I was like, oh gosh, that's all right. What they ended up doing was intubating me. And that's one, ex- that's one experience I would never want to go through ever again because when they intubate you, they basically put you to sleep. Like your, your mind, like, you, like I, I could hear everything around me, but I can't move a muscle. I can't talk. I can't do anything. And so it's like I was trapped in my own body is what it felt like. And it was, it was just, I, I did, I really didn't like that. And then I felt them when they, they put the, that tube down my throat. I felt that. Anyway, they sent me to another facility and there they gave me whatever meds I needed and I fell into a coma for like about three or four days I was in a coma and then I when I woke up I was in one of the rooms there and I still had that that tube in me so I couldn't talk like just my eyes were looking around and I remember seeing my wife and I like was really trying to lift up my arm and she finally was like he's awake he's awake you know and she got all happy and she would call the doctor and the doctor came in and I couldn't talk. Like I was trying to, like, you know, and so I was trying to write down and I was trying to write down my son's name, Malachi. I was trying to write it down. So finally my, my wife saw it. She's like, Malachi? And I said, yeah. She said, oh yeah, he's at home. This was still when like, uh, like right after the pandemic. So no one can sell the hospital wouldn't let visitors in. So my wife was the only one that was there. After I woke up, they took the tube out and it took me a couple of days to get out of bed. I had to, uh, teach myself how to walk again. Uh, it felt like it was a clean sleep for me. And I walked out of that hospital feeling just so thankful. I was so thankful uh, that I made it, that I was still here, you know? And, um, when I got home, um, I surprised my kids. I didn't tell them that we were coming home. And when I walked in, 
my little son Lehi just ran up to me. He was really crying. He was really emotional. Like it was fun. I felt the love of my kids when I got home and I felt so thankful. And from that point on, I made it my priority to do everything I could to get my temple and like recommend back and to fulfill whatever work that the Lord has for me here on this on this earth. And I, I don't know exactly what that is yet, but I know that he does have something for me to do that that's why I'm still here, right? I mean we all have a reason. We all have a purpose in life. Life is precious and, and I can tell you that life is precious. We, we, we can't take it for granted. We can't take it for granted. We, we, we shouldn't. You know, this life that we have, this body that we're blessed with, it's an amazing thing. It's so amazing. And when I went back to the temple, I, I really realized a lot of these things. Everything just really opened up to me. Was, oh, that's why. Okay, you know, it's like I started getting all these revelations and and it just made my, my, my testimony a, a lot stronger. And, you know, and, and so now I'm back where we're very active in church. I was able to get my Melchizedek priesthood back. I was able to ordain my son, you know, it's been a, uh, it's been good. And I know that Heavenly Father and that is real. He is. And that no, no matter what, what we do in this life, he always has a way for us to come back. He does. He has a plan. And a part of that plan is us, is for us to learn, right? I mean, that, that, that's what we're here to learn. So I learned a lot and I still have more to learn. And to this day, I'm I got a calling as the branch, uh, yeah, I'm the branch clerk. So it's, uh, it's going good. It's going good. And, uh, I, I don't look back at any of that stuff that, that I was, uh, dealing with a lot of the, the bad things, uh, the, the dark times. I don't, I don't hold on to that. I think if there's anything that I want to, tell anyone out there that's watching is that if we want to continue in this life we need to learn how to let go of those things we can't focus on the bad things you know we, we, we have to move along we have to move forward and it is hard it is very very hard very challenging but it's not impossible I can tell you that it's not impossible, you know. And for those of you that are struggling with your testimonies and questioning things about the church, uh, ask Heavenly Father. Ask Heavenly Father. You got to get it from the direct source. Don't go looking at videos and don't go looking at talking to people that that you're not sure of. You know, like just get down and ask God because. He will tell you. And he has his own ways of telling you. It may not be something huge. He may not open the heavens to you and, 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 you know, like all this dramatic stuff that some of us are, are really looking for. You know, sometimes it takes that one little small, tiny, still voice to resonate in our soul. Yeah. I love that so much. I think that. One of the things that really resonates a lot with me or just has stuck out to me and what you've been sharing is the importance of the temple. And I think coming on the heels of conference and how the temple was so emphasized in this conference session and, you know, I'm sitting here listening to you and thinking, man, I need to go spend more time in the temple. I need to spend more time there. And just hearing those experiences that you shared, it's so beautiful. And you've gone through so many things in your life that have been challenging and 
I don't know. Like, I just, I really appreciate you taking the time to share your story. And when you talk about, you know, you have a mission and you're still here for a reason. I, I think part of that was because a lot of people need to hear your story. And I'm glad that we got to put you on the podcast so that a lot of people can hear your story because I think it's so important. And it's so incredible to hear just how you got back together with your wife and, you know, came back and you don't let the things from the past hold you back from such a beautiful future. And it's incredible to hear. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I, sometimes I can't believe it myself, too. I, I, I feel so, so blessed. And it's like that song, you know, you sit and you count your blessings, you'll, you'll realize what the Lord has done. You know, yeah. Well, well. Thank you for letting me be in your podcast. Yeah, enjoy it. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure to have you and to hear your story. And you have so many beautiful insights. And thank you for sharing them. Thank you. A lot of people have asked us how they can support the podcast, and we have created a comeback podcast merch line on our website www.comebackpodcast.org. All of the money made from the merch goes right back into the podcast. So if you are interested in supporting the podcast um, and you want to purchase some merch, we would love it. Check it out. Thank you so much for being a supporter of the Comeback Podcast and listening to our episodes. It would mean so much to us if you would like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps other people be able to find us and we want to share this message to everyone.